Welcome back to how to build an F-14 Tomcat. Uh, probably the first thing you see is the bright red windscreen area here here on the fuselage. I uh, I got the first coat of paint on it. There's some a uh, bit of imp imperfections in it, mostly some areas that there's not enough uh, resin on the glass. And since there's already paint, instead of just painting more resin on there, I just fill it in with some with some glazing compound that'll uh, fill in the weave. And then as you sand it off, it'll It'll actually look more like a windscreen instead of a giant, giant red nose off a clown. But uh, anyways, that's where that's going. You can see the book behind it. The uh, main reason for the book, as we're looking here at a couple of the pictures, you can see some, some wing details. And the reason why is we're starting to put panels on the wings. So getting closer and closer to getting all this detailing done. If you're wondering what the bright blue thing is there in the center, that's actually the uh, that'll be the plug for the the spoiler panels. It's just one giant panel right now. I'm gonna make the make the plug in each part a single piece, and then it'll be up to each individual owner if they want to do individual spoiler panels or if they just want to have one long spoiler panel. It's a nice tight fit. What I did is as I built the wing, I just built it all as one. I cut the the flap out that goes here across the back, which is already detailed, and then. I marked out the spore where I needed it and then I just cut the spore right out of the wing panel and then on the back side of it I just back filled it in with some eighth inch balsa between each wing rib to fill in to fill in the hole this will uh this probably is not going to get I'll have a parting plane a very complex one that I go all along the back side of this around all the details for the hinge lines so none of this will get fiberglass at the most I'll probably just put a, a piece of litho plate down here just to kind of smooth it out and then I might just run a parting plane all along the back side of the trailing edge. Make my life a lot easier when it comes time to to mold the wings. See a couple of the panels. I got one of the the non-movable spoiler panels here. I think they just use this as an as an access point for a couple of things. So I got that panel on and I got one here at the tip edge as well. So now I've got that done on both both wing panels. This whole area right here on the the wing panel, that's all going to be one one piece of metal. Or at least that's the plan. My uh, my litho sheets down here aren't quite big enough to fit the whole wing panel. So I'm either going to have to find some aluminum sheeting that I can get wide enough and long enough to do the whole panel, or just kind of put a piece on here right in the center and that'll just have to be something that uh, will get filled in during the finishing process for paint which if I if I get the uh, if I get the line nice and tight it might not even show up in the molds we'll just have to we'll have to see when we get there I'm gonna do all the the exterior of the outline panels first to get all those done the bottoms a little bit more complex due to just the way all the the leading edge track mounts are you can see here for the the leading edge there's a lot of little panels like these two here you got this one I mean it's like this just the entire way down the leading edge of the wing so these alone alone are gonna take a good bit of time here down at the wing tip we've got one large panel I've got to draw in the uh, one of the nav light positions here this is a uh, a formation light panel and then this is just another just a plain panel with some screws around the outside of it so all that will get done the trailing edge see there's some more detail there's actually a piano hinge line this entire way down this hinge line on this very back line and what it does is on the uh, the full scale as the flaps go down this panel will actually it'll hinge up towards the top surface of the wing so it, it puts a slot for the air to go from the bottom of the wing panel to the top of the flap to kind of accelerate the air and get more uh, get more lift out of it. And then these also have some piano on, some piano hinges on them as well. But I have no idea what those are for unless it's just a, an easy way to just run a, a single pin down through there so they can move, remove all that at once. But again, here on the bottom, all of this is one giant panel. The full scale was built like that. It's a single panel wing skin on the top and the bottom. And I believe they use some sort of uh, acid burning to to put stringers the full length of the, the wing. So it's pretty 
pretty high tech stuff for back when the airplane, when the full scale was originally designed. As far as the the structure for the actual airplane, I think what I'm going to do is here the little dowel you see here. That's actually the pivot point that'll get drilled out, and that'll be a uh, part of the molds. I'm going to have a machined aluminum bearing holder that's going to get carbon fibered in between the wing panels. The bearings will be press fit in there, which is going to be two taper bearings. So it holds not only radial and thrust loads, it'll also hold the incidence of the the wing panel without having to have some sort of track system back here. So it'll be just like Bob's setup, just a little bit smaller detail. The uh, the bearings are only about seven eighths of an inch for this airplane, compared to Bob's, I think, are like two and a half or something. It's, but same thing. And then from this uh, aluminum machine bearing holder, I'm going to have a quarter inch in grain carbon uh, laminated wing spar that runs the entire length of the wing panel out to about this point. There'll be a another eighth inch balsa uh, end rib that'll be carbon laminated on both sides. Then I'll have another eighth or three sixteenths balsa uh, end grain spar that'll run the full length of the trailing edge as well back to a probably an eighth inch ply and carbon laminated rib is here and then each end each hinge line will be inserted into the the aft spar so the spoiler hinges as long as well as the the flap hinges will be they'll be in a pretty good bit i'll have probably a solid blocks of balsa in each section or i'll probably just hinge the 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 trailing edge flaps just like the full scale where it kind of over here in the picture if i can find it for you And you can kind of see a detail over here. Actually, that's the hinge there that's permanently attached to the wing panel. And then there's just a pin that runs between them to attach it. I probably did the same thing for the uh, for the model just as a full scale. Just to make life. Try to make it just like I want to do. As close to 100% accurate as possible. Now, as far as the F-16 goes, someone asked. It's made by Yellow Aircraft for anyone else interested. It's... Uh, I think it's about 68 inches long or so. I can see it right now. I've got the inlet duct is in place. The the aft uh, bulkhead for the stab pivots are all in place. And you can see the inlet. The nose gear door is hinged along with the cylinder. The canopy is hinged. And the new wing panels are over here with the ailerons cut out. All their edges end capped the wings are capped and it's kind of on a on a standstill at the moment I'm waiting on a couple parts from yellow aircraft to get in so I can get the, the fuselage bulkheads and the main landing gear installed but it shouldn't take me too much longer to get that done I got to install a light system which is hanging up here for it after I get some uh, extensions and all for that that's probably gonna be the most time-consuming for that entire project is getting the lights in place but it's getting there um, someone also asked about places to get this uh, these aluminum sheets the best thing I can tell you if you have a small town around or if you live in a small town is just start calling up some some printers and ask them if they're still doing a lithography type printing all these guys that are still doing it which is kind of few and far between all, once they use this stuff once you can see on the back side of this one once they use it, that's it's done with. It's once they're done with that printing printing run for whatever they're using it for, it's no good to them anymore. So you can see on this one, it's just a couple of details, and that's it. And the other side that we use has just got some stuff from other sheets stuck to it. But uh, once they're done with it, it's just scrap metal to them. They just normally throw it away. The uh, the friend of mine that I got this from. He literally says he has boxes and boxes of this stuff. And when the uh, price of aluminum is up, he takes it and to the recycling place and gets some money out of it. So even if you have to pay 20 bucks or so for a box of it, I've probably got enough to last me two or three projects in there. So, and speaking of next projects, I have no idea what I'm going to do. Keep bouncing back and forth between a couple of different ideas. But uh, I'm thinking about a big 
Grumman Tiger Cat next. And when I mean big, I'm thinking like 160 inch wingspan, something big enough for a pair of 150 uh, cc radial engines. So that's one idea. Another idea is a uh, big F-101 Voodoo. I know Butch is gonna uh, machine that stuff out and send that off to him, and that might be a next project for me. It's just kind of a, a fun thing to fly around with. So, but guys, that's pretty much where we're at. If you got any more questions, feel free to ask. I'm uh, going out of town for the next two weeks, starting on Monday. So there won't be a couple of videos up, but I can I still work on some. Uh, some CAD drawings and try and get some stuff done and keep everybody in the loop. But for now, that's all I got, and we'll see you in the shop. Have a good one.